Hello, everyone. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. I apologize for not getting this out yesterday. Um, it is Saturday, but <clears throat> it just didn't work out. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It just it didn't work out. I didn't even do the reading for Instagram yesterday just because it, it just didn't work out. <laughs> but anyway, here we are weekend edition of morning coffee so this is going to be for friday saturday and sunday okay so wait today is the 26th so this is going to be for the 25th to the 27th yes this is a general message so um it's not love sorry guys hold on i gotta adjust this okay it's not love um uh, or sign or career or anything specific this is just a general energy whatever spirit wants to discuss with us today yeah please take what resonates leave what doesn't it is a general reading yes all right so let's see is there anything um just a quick reminder the twin flame reading for tomorrow the 27th is not going to be live because I will be bowling, <laughs> so I have to um, record it and then post it, which is going to happen. And then the monthly Zodiacs, those should be out this weekend, potentially by the end of the day. Um, I just have to record the intro and do some editing, and we've got February month, February readings. Yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at divine underscore conversations. I am running a, a sale for followers this month. All followers get 20% off a general discount reading, but act fast because that sale expires on midnight, January 31st. Yes. Um, ooh, you could also um, check me out on Facebook uh, at Divine Conversations 2711. Go ahead and give me a like there. And I think that's it. <clears throat> so without further ado, let's get started. All right. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the weekend of Friday, January 25th through Sunday, January 27th. Thank you so much, spirit. All right, guys, just gonna give this a few shuffles and then we'll see what we've got. Hmm. Weekend edition. We're, I'm gonna be using a new deck to clarify today. I'm super excited about it, but I'll tell you guys when I get there. But you see, I'm so excited, I couldn't wait. I just had to tell you now, Queen of Cups. Ooh. Oh. Okay, we're gonna leave that there. But this is, in fact, the Queen of Cups here. Okay. Um, no, I'm not gonna leave it. I'm gonna put it back in the deck, but the Queen of Cups did catch my attention, and when I went to go show you guys, it fell out. So, we'll see what that, I'm not. And then she came out in reverse. I feel like there's some, there's some sort of uprooting of emotions or purging of emotions that's happening. I mean, that's nothing new. We've been going through that a lot lately, but, um, Hmm. For so, what I'm hearing is for some of you, this is a situation from the distant past, something that you never actually dealt with has just kind of popped up or is going to be popping up. I know actually I had that experience Thursday night. I had a random crying fit. You know, I got home, I got I got ready for bed, I got in bed, and all of a sudden, I just, like, broke down. And it was, like, an ugly cry, too. <laughs> and I don't even really, I couldn't even tell you where it came from. It just happened. All right, one more shuffle. Mm-hmm. 
And it was like so bad that like, cause everybody in my apartment was asleep or at least like quiet. And I could almost hear my voice like carrying, like reverberating through the apartment, which was, which was kind of scary. And I was like, oh my God, Eric, you need to chill. And so I was like covering up and all up in my covers and like just, you know, trying to stifle it but it was just so strong that it, it, it was y'all when i say it was an ugly cry it was an ugly cry <laughs> and i don't even know what triggered it i just remember getting ready for bed i get gotten to bed and the next thing i know i'm sobbing like it was bad okay let's see what we've got for the weekend here Here we go. Underneath the deck is the two of pentacles right now. All right. So um, there's a lot of balance happening, um, but there's a lot of what I'm hearing, what spirit is saying is juggling. Um, and it's interesting because I'm feeling almost a two of swords energy. For, this is a lot. And we have the devil here. Oh, goodness gracious. That devil, man. Um, I just feel like. This Two of Pentacles energy is giving me almost a Two of Swords energy. It's like some of us or some of you are juggling between situations, juggling between emotions, trying not, not to deal with something. Or you're juggling things in an effort to deal with it. But I just don't feel like it's working out the way you had planned, the way you had wanted. And by that I mean... um in dealing with it, in healing from it, or handling it. Things may not be necessarily working out the way you want them to, okay. We have the Four of Swords, the Four of Pentacles, the Lovers, and the Hermit, with the Eight of Swords, the Seven of Swords, the Page of Wands, the Eight of Wands, the Devil, and the Ace of Swords. My, my, this is quite a bit <laughs> here. Um, hmm. Okay, well, I'm seeing two sides of an equation now. The two of pentacles, okay, so I'm seeing and I'm seeing energies for two individuals. And we could call it divine feminine, divine masculine. We absolutely could. It doesn't have to be that way though. And actually it doesn't even have to be two people. This could just be one person. I mean this is a general reading, so take excuse me, take what resonates, okay? Um or take it how it resonates. Fit it into your life how it resonates. And if it doesn't fit, don't don't force it to. Four of Swords, Four of Pentacles, the Lovers, and the Hermit. Someone is really standing their ground here. Um, staying, st maintaining their space. Okay, what I'm seeing with the Four of Swords and the Four of Pentacles is someone is definitely in a restful period. Uh, very meditative, probably pretty deep in meditation, um, has been for a while because this also has the hermit in this row, okay? Um, but maintaining their ground, someone is working really hard to man maintain their ground here between the Four of Swords and the Four of Pentacles. Um, truck. <laughs> um, the lovers and the hermit, you know, you could be talking about a love situation, what I feel like what the lovers is saying is some sort of love situation has um, really caused someone to go within and do some deep soul searching and some really deep healing. Now, again, like I said, we could be seeing this as, you know, divine feminine, divine masculine. So with that said, you know, this this relationship causing someone to go deep inward to heal, to grow, to change, whatever. 
you could definitely be talking about the Twin Flame situation there. Again, it doesn't have to be, though. And the Two of Pentacles energy in association with that is trying to keep it together. And actually, I've never actually really noticed this, but there is a moth on this card. You see that there? Oh, wait. You see that there? That moth right there. And I've never really noticed that before. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. It's kind of creeping me out, but um, very much moth to a flame situation. Which to me is speaking to um, migrating to the light within, okay? Now getting into the second row, you have the Eight of Swords, the Seven of Swords, the Page of Wands, and the Eight of Wands. This is where it can either be one person or two people, okay? Because if this is one person, you know, they're, you're going within and you're doing a lot of deep soul searching and you're standing your ground, okay? With the Four of Swords and the Four of Pentacles, you're standing your ground and maintaining your peace, trying to maintain the peace. But you see, this person wants to communicate or at least wants to move quickly. There is... There is heavily conflicting energy here between the Eight of Swords, the Seven of Swords, and then the Page of Wands and Eight of Wands. But if you look at it closely, you have eights on either side of this row. And those are cards of abundance. And yet someone doesn't feel like they have the abundance or the freedom to speak up. Eight of Wands, Eight of Swords. And you're deceiving yourself. You're either deceiving yourself or deceiving others. The Seven of Swords is saying, is speaking to the deception, but then the Page of Wands is inspiration. Wanting to move in a new direction. Undertake something. This is a really difficult energy to... feel through it's almost as if especially with this two of pentacles here it's almost as if you're being pulled in two different directions opposing directions and i'm feeling for some of you this has to do with people from your past that you once identified with that are no long that are not in alignment with where you actually truly want to go which is something that you're learning about between the lovers and the hermit Wow. And this four of pentacles here, if you look at it, this woman has her hands around her neck. And I'm hearing choking, but it's also like an energy of not being able to speak. Like holding, holding your words in, holding your true expression in. The Seven of Swords is backstabbing, cheating, stealing, lying, that kind of energy. And if you notice, it's the same woman as in the Four of Pentacles. It's very interesting. Someone is deceiving themselves. Someone is really doing a disservice to themselves by not speaking up for who they truly are, what they truly believe in, where they want to go, blah, blah, blah. It could also, it doesn't have to be, because I'm getting the speaking up from Eight of Wands here, but the Eight of Wands often talks about communication, but it doesn't have to. It can talk about movement in a particular direction with surety. Okay. And so... But with all that said, we have this conclusion in the devil and the ace of swords, which to me, with all of this, because this is pretty, this is a pretty rough reading. 
or at least the, the, the energies feel a little bit rough, but here we have the Ace of Swords with the Devil. And this actually feels really, really good because to me, this is someone starting to realize just who the devil is in their lives. I'm getting an energy of facing the devil. Facing the devil, but defeating the devil with truth. With truth. <laughs> Now, ah, wait, hold on, hold on, guys. I'm seeing this differently now. Okay, because instead of seeing these two rows here, now I'm seeing one thing here and one thing here, left and right. Again, could be masculine, could be feminine. Masculine would be on the right. I'm not sorry, the left. Feminine would be on the right. Two of pentacles in between. In between worlds, a lot of us have been in between worlds for some time, and I still do feel like there's a little bit of that still going on. Wow. Thank you, Spirit. This totally, like, changes. This, I mean, I literally just saw this differently. <laughs> but it still makes sense. On the masculine side, you have someone... With the Four of Swords, Four of Pentacles, Eight of Swords, Seven of Swords. They're resting. They're, they're silent. They're not speaking. Four of Pentacles. They're holding on to, for dear life. Eight of Swords, they feel trapped. Seven of Swords, they're being deceptive. But that deception is mostly for themselves. I'm sorry, towards themselves. They're, they're deceiving themselves. They're, they, they, whoever this is, again, this does not have to be twin flames. This does not have to be masculine and feminine, all right? Take this as it resonates. But on this side of the equation, this person it, it thinks they are deceiving the others around them, and they probably are, but the, 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 the most damage that they're doing is deceiving themselves, and I'm not sure they realize that yet. And they have the devil here. Codependency, toxicity, addiction. But to me, the devil is taking on a, a whole new... Uh, identity. Because to me, the devil energy is anything that keeps you in a state of inauthenticity. That makes you feel bad for who you truly are, or what you enjoy doing, what brings you joy, what brings you happiness. And that, I mean, that we could talk, that's a whole other video that we could talk about that because there's there are some things that are coming to mind now. And it even has to do with, you know, some of what the spiritual community talks about, but we don't have to talk about that right now. But think about that. Think about what it is that you truly enjoy doing. What brings you joy? What brings you happiness? What does your soul and your heart long for? And then think about the ways that you're say you you are told, oh that's 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 wrong. That's not good. You can't do that. That's the devil energy. That really that truly is the devil energy. Okay. So going back to the original way we were looking at this spread, with the one row here on the top, one hero here on the bottom, and then here at the bottom you have the devil and the ace of swords facing the devil with truth. Just because others say it's bad doesn't necessarily make it so. That is their opinion. That is their perspective. If it's wrong for them, then that's fine. But that does not mean it's wrong for everyone else. And that right there is an example of devil energy. It's also an example of codependency, which is what this card represents. Now, Back to our second view of the spread. This here. The lovers, the hermit, page of wands, eight of wands, ace of swords. There is divine union in the air. Has been for some time now. Always has been, but it's stronger now. Because more and more of us are reaching this 
are either starting to reach this divine union within or we're starting to actually work for it now. Honestly, like truthfully work for it. Regardless of what someone else may be doing outside of you, right? And we're going within, we're finding our own inner, inner light, we're finding our truth and it's inspiring us to move. It's inspiring us to communicate. It's inspiring us to live the truth, Ace of Swords. But then you have that Two of Pentacles. And honestly, this could be a good exercise. Look at this spread and see how it resonates with the inner masculine and inner feminine energies. How are you juggling? How are you juggling? Instead of fusing these energy to these energies together, say with the energy of temperance, right? Because the temperance card is all about alchemy and balancing, bringing two opposing sub two two different substances together to form a new compound. Instead of fusing these energies together with temperance are you just juggling back and forth between them with the two of pentacles almost like you're appeasing each side giving this side a little bit of time on the on you know in the light and this side a little bit of time and this side and this side instead of bringing them together healing and allowing all of it to reside all the time in the light does that make sense It's interesting. It's very, very interesting. All right, cool. So now I'm going to get into the clarification section. I am using today the Epic Tarot. I love this deck, it is so cool. It is so cool. And um, it's available at Om Shanti Bookshop, which is where I do readings every Friday from 11 to 5. Um, the link to their website is in the description box. They do take online orders, and they will ship to you. Um, a lot of their, what they have available is on the website. and um, if, if it, But also, you could always give them a call, and they will you know, place an order for you and ship it out to you. But this is where I got this deck and I really love it. It's so cool. The imagery is like amazing. All right, so we're gonna get some clarification here. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure how I wanna split up the, the reading. So I'm just gonna go with the original way that I was seeing it with the top row, bottom row, that kind of thing. And we'll see from there. All right, one more shuffle here. So for the top row, four of swords, four of pentacles, the lovers and the hermit. One more. All righty, there we go. Best message please, spirit. Three of wands, that's interesting. Uh, underneath the deck you have death. Death. All right. So there's transformation happening here. What else do we have? Oh, sure is a lot. Okay, three of wands. Huh. Wow. Wow. Okay, so you have the Seven of Swords, the Page of Swords, not the Page, I'm sorry, the Knight of Swords, the Ace of Cups, the Knight of Wands, the Queen of Pentacles. All of those are in reverse. And then you have the Three of Swords, 
the knight of the nine of pentacles and that two of pentacles again these are upright I have to turn these right side up so that I can see them because I'm, I'm still fairly new to this deck. And if you'll notice, I'll show you guys, but the court cards are, are animals. So the page is a unicorn. The knight is a griffin. The queen is a phoenix. So here. Yeah, the queen is a phoenix and the king is a dragon. It's so freaking cool, guys. So look, these are the, these are the knights. These are the griffins, the knights. So we have the knight, and in this deck, wands is books. So you have the knight of books and the knight of swords. Or, in other words, the knight of wands and the knight of swords. And then this is the queen of pentacles, which is a phoenix. And then you have the seven of swords here with the Ace of Cups. This is very interesting. And all of these came out in reverse. And with that, you have the Three of Wands. This is a lot here, guys. Give me a second. I'm new to this deck, so I'm having to... <laughs> okay, let's start here. Let me put these, let me put these here for a second. But we're going to start here with this Three of Wands, or in this case, the, in this deck, it's the Three of Books. All right, waiting for a return on an investment. Um... Here comes the sun, waiting for a return on investment. Or in this case, having put time and effort into something. And it fell on the Four of Swords and the Four of Pentacles. So it's like, hmm. Uh, originally, I was saying somebody was holding their own space, like, like you know, standing their ground. And in this case, it definitely could be a situation in which you know who you are, you know what you've done, you know what you, why you did it, you know, I mean, you know what the truth is. And so you're just waiting for the universe to return the favor. It's very interesting because moving forward here, what I'm getting with these five cards, the Knight of Wands and Swords, the Seven of Swords, the Queen of Pentacles and the Ace of Cups, this Queen of Pentacles here is a mother figure that has kept someone from not only offering love, but being in a state of self-love, all right? And because all of this came out in the reverse and that's where if you if you like skip down to this ace of swords and the devil that's where someone is starting to realize something somebody learned some pretty nasty things either from a mother figure or a feminine figure in their lives or got some nasty stuff about, learned some nasty things about feminine figures here. Because then you have the Three of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Two of Pentacles. Heartbreak is keeping someone single. And instead of l dealing with it, you're just juggling. But all of this is clarifying Four of Swords, Four of uh, Pentacles, the Lovers, and the Hermit. So someone is going within and finding this out starting to realize it like it's getting to a point where they can't really hide it any longer and that's absolutely why they could be juggling because they're still tr 
trying to hide from it, in a sense. Okay, but there's a transformation happening because you have death here. <laughs> the transfer spirit is saying the transformation is happening whether you like it or not. Okay. So now, let's go to the Eight of Swords, the Seven of Swords, the Page of Wands, and the Eight of Wands. Please, Spirit. The Hierophant. The King of Cups. Look at that. Temperance. And that's it. Underneath the deck, you have the Ten of Swords. Look at this, guys. Look, 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 look. This is the king. These are the dragons. That's a king of cups. Isn't that so cool? <laughs> I love it. Um, somebody really wants to reach out because they are, they are feeling some shit. They're in love. Somebody's in love. Or somebody has the emotional maturity to say something. Mm-hmm. Hierophant can talk about marriage. Absolutely can talk about marriage. between And between the King of Cups, the Hierophant, and the Temperance card here, this really could be someone feeling like they're ready to take something to the next level. Or this is something that they're growing into. And they're feeling trapped. You're feeling trapped between the old life and their new life. That's on the brink of beginning. But with the Ten of Swords here, this is a good thing because it's come because the nastiness is coming to an end. I hear I'm hearing the narcissism is coming to an end. The worst is behind you. So there being there, there's inspiration happening here. You feel, someone feels trapped still, but they're keeping it to themselves. They're keeping this new reality to themselves, which is fine. But this Eight of Wands energy here is making me feel like at some point things could just change just like that, out of nowhere, abruptly. Like once this, I really feel like this is, I honestly, I feel like this is more of advice, to be honest, because once this, because of temperance here, it's like they're saying, like I said, you need to balance this out instead of just juggling it. You need to have the emotional maturity, king of cups, um, and the authority even with the hierophant to balance this out instead of just juggling it. <laughs> All right, so now let's clarify the devil and the ace of swords here, please, spirit. Wow, would you look at that? And ooh! <laughs> Underneath the deck is death again. We have the Ace of Wands. The Devil. Holy shit. The Three of Pentacles and the Three of Cups. My, my, my. Now, again, keep in mind, the, um, in this deck, Wands is books. So you have the Ace of Books or the Ace of Wands and the Devil with the Three of Cups and the Three of Pentacles. Or also in this deck, it's called the Three of Discs. Interesting how fire and air are coming out together because you had the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Swords come out in the top row here. And now you have the Ace of Swords with the Ace of Wands clarifying. There needs to be some sort of – 
balancing between mind, body, and spirit. Teamwork with yourself. What I really feel like this is saying is having the inspiration. You have the idea, you have the epiphany, the aha moment, and, and you, you're seeing some sort of truth or potentially you could be seeing some sort of truth. And now with the Ace of Wands and the double here, it's the inspiration to do something about it. Some sort of passion to, now this could be sexual desire in that sense. Lust. Three of Pentacles and the Three of Cups, though, is the strongest aspect here. It's the po most positive aspect here. Those are the energies of self-mastery. And Spirit is saying the balance between mind, body, and spirit, which is going to give you the inspiration, the passion, the fire, the energy to do something about this devil energy in your life, this codependency, toxicity whatever that means for you, and to create this change with death. But in order for this change to happen, there needs to be temperance, balancing, alchemy. Okay? Oof. All right, I got to make this quick because I think my mic is going to die soon. So we're going to get some... Oracle Guidance here. Whispers of Love. We'll start there, and then we'll get from the Lightworker Oracle, okay? Okay, one more shuffle. All right, guys, so... Um, the way spirit wants to use this deck for clarification because they want to give some sort of clarity where it comes to opening the heart, um, achieving this, achieving this uh, emotional maturity here, heart chakra cleansing. They're here, here. They're saying back to what you love. Wow. Okay, underneath the deck you have. Receive with love and appreciation. Receiving something lovingly from others is a way of showing love. I often, I do like to say, see that as, you know, receiving from yourself. Receiving the authority or the freedom to be who it is you are. The first card that came out is back to what you love. Your current situation is giving you an opportunity to reevaluate re what you want. And that goes right in line it falls right in line with what i was saying earlier about the devil energy where it's like do what you love not what people tell you to do right you have be oh, jesus christmas be authentic to who you are you are asked to be real and true pertaining to who you are and how you feel and then finally, you, it ha you have love makes the difference. Love can help heal past hurts and provides a sense of security, self-worth, and importance. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, let's gonna, we're going to close the, the reading here with uh, one card from the Lightworker Oracle. Alrighty, guys. Let's see what we've got. Best message. Divine Talents, card number 39. Underneath the deck is, whoa, card number 10. Power of the Divine Masculine. I want to read that too. So we're going to start there. And then we have card number 39, Divine Talents. Starting with number 10, Power of the Divine Masculine. An empowering energy seeks expression from within. 
It wishes to free you from confusion, paralysis, and stagnancy. It seeks to stir you into consciously chosen action, greater discipline, and focus. It's time to end the frustrating, uh, the frustration, excuse me, of repeating old patterns. You are ready to break through into a new way of life. Feel inspired and energized and focus on your dreams and desires. Take steps to manifest them on the physical plane. Believe your success is inevitable. The divine masculine in you knows when to accept and when to say no to a belief, fear, habit, person or situation. This divine masculine energy exists within all men and women. It rallies the spirit and responds in times when you may feel drained, taken advantage of, or overwhelmed by too many choices and demands. It cuts through the confusion and comes with choice and priority setting. It refuses to be distracted and keeps you from being dissuaded from your life purpose. The divine masculine is growing within you now. It is the spiritual light that reveals the truth without filters or veils. Let this energy clear distractions, demands, and drama from your life. Let it help you discern what is best for you and give you the courage to act on it. Let it help you sort out what is true from what is illusion. Let it help you dedicate your time and energy to what has most meaning for you. It will empower you to claim success in what matters most to you. Do not minimize your inner divine masculine, whether you be a man or a woman. Nourish it. However, if your masculine energy has been trapped in the wounds of your ancestors, he may demand absolute perfection before you believe you are worthy of love. He may even be violent towards you, perhaps keeping you from saying no to violent relationships or self-harming through over-exercising, denying your body good nutrition or rest, or by ignoring your feelings, vulnerabilities, and intuitive wisdom. He may need healing from your inner divine feminine to feel loved, valuable, worthy, needed, and respected. The inner misogynist will fall away as a new empowered divine masculine asserts itself within you. Learn to trust this part of yourself. Let him become strong in you. He can be your guide, protector, defender. You are ready. Oh, sorry. Trust when he says no to something or someone. Trust when he says you are ready for this and encourages you to act as you trust in him, you will trust yourself to be visible. Your inner divine masculine will help you shine your light without fear so others can also find their way through darkness into love. That's excellent. Okay, and finally, we have card number 39, Divine Talents. You are a talented soul. Over many lifetimes, you have developed your spiritual abilities to channel higher awareness, attract healing energy, and radiate, oh, sorry, to attract healing energy and radiate light to uplift the consciousness of those around you. Your divine talents are many and uniquely expressed through you. Your talents do not have to resemble those of another to have their own inestimable value. Do not be afraid to use them. Divine talents are a way in which the universe reminds us of what we are here to do. Divine talents are unlimited. They include the ability to channel spiritual guidance and healing energy, to perceive clairvoyantly, and be psychic and empathic. Other spiritual talents are the ability to re release earthbound spirits, earth healing techniques such as working with energy grids, as well as healing ability with crystals and many other varied and sorry and many and varied technologies of light. There are other spiritual talents too. These include writing, performing, sound healing, dancing to awaken awareness, creating art, photography, or divinely inspired tools and jewelry. Cooking food that heals body and spirit is a spiritual talent, as are the abilities to bring people together, to offer comforting and inspiring words at the right time, to help others overcome fear and feel more at peace in moments of importance and more. You could use your divine talents in your career as a healer, in your work in the corporate world, or in your stay-at-home role as a parent, helping to raise more conscious, secure, and empowered children in a world that is in desperate need of strong, spiritually grounded leaders for the future. You can use your talents to create a vocation that truly inspires you and brings your light to the world. 
You can use them in the line at the grocery store. The point is that you use them. This oracle comes with a message. Your spiritual talents have, I'm sorry, your spiritual talents, some of which have been developed in other lifetimes and will simply and suddenly, quote, spring back to life as if from out of the blue this lifetime. Others need a little more attention, patience, and effort to be brought to the life in the world. This is particularly the case for you at this time if you have also drawn the Oracle of Past Life Activation, but we haven't done that. Oh, here we go. This, also, this Oracle also reminds you to do what makes you happy, to chase your sacred bliss and express yourself in the world via the unique and special abilities that the divine has bestowed upon you. When you follow what you love, you are on your life path and you shall succeed, beloved. <laughs> hmm, weren't we just talking about that? Anyway, there it is, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great weekend. I hope you guys have have a good day and, and all that. And um, I will, well, I'm going to work on getting the Zodiac readings out tonight by the end of the day. And then I'll see you tomorrow for a Twin Flame reading. Yeah? Have a good one, guys. Much love. Take care. Bye.